Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime is now transcribed for radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Anything wrong, Captain? Nothing serious, Mr. Templer. Just coming down here for a check. Go on just as soon as we can. Oh, and uh, where is here? Headstone, New Mexico. Used to be a big silver mining town, but now it's just another little town, I guess. Although I did notice there's a carnival playing over on the edge of this emergency landing strip. Well, how long are we to enjoy the hospitality of Headstone? Oh, two or three hours. Long enough to see the town and have dinner if you like. We're sorry to delay, sir. Oh, it's all right, Captain. I'm seldom bored in a strange town. Well, you better go back and fasten your seatbelt, Mr. Templer. We're coming down now. Right, I'll see you later. You know me? <laughs> Yet I don't seem to recall your face. Harry Kelly, and you don't recall my face because we've never met, but I've seen many pictures of you, and so I recognized you immediately. Well, that's very flattering. Tell me, Mr. Kelly, how can I get into town? You can find a cab on the other side of the carnival. Planning on staying long? Not at all. Should I? On the contrary, I was just going to suggest that I doubt if Headstone would welcome the presence of the saint. Just a friendly remark, you understand. Oh, naturally. <laughs> and if I may be permitted a friendly question, why are you telling me this? Just an interest in the continued health of my fellow human. If you have any trouble in town, look me up. Anyone can tell you where to find me. And the girl of the big show is just about to start. See, little Fatima, the girl who shakes and shivers like a bowl full of jelly. Only one dime, ten cents, the tenth part of a dollar. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Stop right there. I read the past, the present, and the future. Learn your fortune, young man. I already know it, grandmother. I'm destined to meet a tall, dark, and beautiful woman. I'll settle for nothing less. I see strange lines on your face, young man. Huh? I will tell your fortune without charge. Give me your hand. I see danger. Beware of a blonde young woman. She will bring you death. There are worse ways of dying, grandmother. I see danger. Much danger for one with a halo about his head. Blood and death. Unless he travels, I see... <laughs> I think I'm beginning to get the idea. You might tell your um, crystal ball that I'm beginning to be interested. Goodbye, Grandmother, and may the saint bless you. Taxi, mister? Oh, thank you. Uh, say, do you suppose you can drive me somewhere that serves a good dinner? <laughs> sure. The Silver Dollar Hotel. Oh, fine. You know, I was just sitting there communing with nature about how many guys there are who blow their wad to watch some dame do a hula but won't spend a dime on a hack. Do I detect a touch of Brooklyn? How could you miss? <laughs> That's me, chum. Ziggy from Flatbush. I used to drive a hack in Brooklyn. Now I own the only hack in Headstone. It's like, huh? You know, I ain't seen a Brooklyn Bridge for ten years since I come out here for my health. Like I always say, it's a smart man who knows when it's healthy to get out of town. Meaning what? Does everything have to mean something? <laughs> Me, I mind my own business, I stay healthy. That's why I'm living in Headstone instead of under one. I see. But if you didn't mind your own business, I suppose you'd give me some advice about leaving Headstone. Is that it? No, no, no advice, man. That's part of minding my own business. Headstone is a great place for strangers to visit. If they paid off their insurance. Here you are, waiter. Very nice dinner. My check, please. No, 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 thank you. Keep the change. Hello. Well, 
Well, this is a surprising hotel. First a beautiful dinner, and then an even more beautiful blonde. May I sit down? Oh, by all means, Miss... Uh... Uh, Betty Connolly. You're Simon Templer? Mm, I should have worn my dark glasses. But now that the truth is out, <laughs> you might as well call me Simon. Uh, all right, Simon. Now, how did you know who I am? Now, don't tell me that you were just passing and recognized me. Why, Ziggy told me that you were here. He owns and drives the taxi here uh, in Headstone. I know I shouldn't look a gift blonde in the hair, but why did Ziggy tell you I was in here? Well, Ziggy knows that I need help, and he thought, well, that is, since you're the saint, you might help me. Well, I have been known to help beautiful blondes on occasion. <laughs> but tell me why you should need help, Betty. Someone's been trying to kill me. Oh, there should be a law against that. Are you sure? I've been shot at twice. And, and everybody here has been very unfriendly, except Ziggy and a man named Harry Kelly. Huh. I've noticed the unfriendliness in this town. But being unfriendly towards you is obviously an indication of insanity. Oh, please don't joke about it. I, I'm frightened. All right, my dear. Now tell me about it. Well, uh, my father was known as Silver Slim Conley. He lived here for years. But he sent me east to school when I was very young, and I didn't come back here until recently. My father died about a month ago. Oh, I'm sorry. He was broke, and all he left me was his old silver mine. It, he called it the Betty Mine, after me. And I take it somebody wants the mine. No, no, the mine is completely worthless. There hasn't been any silver in it for years. But, my dear, you were shot at twice. Have you any idea who did the shooting? No, but it might be the same man who told me to get out of town. Oh, who? Mike McCarthy. Ziggy says he's an eastern gangster who's been living out here for several months. Will you help me, Mr. Tem Simon? <clears throat> well, I've never been able to say no to a pretty girl. You mentioned a man named Harry Kelly before. Just who is he? He knew my father. He's been very friendly to me, although he thought I ought to leave town, too. I've met Mr. Kelly, and he intrigues me very much. I, um, I think we'll go see him. All right. Oh, uh, just a minute. Hmm? <laughs> there was some red dust on your coat. Oh, thank you. Ziggy apparently doesn't get enough passengers to keep his cab dusted. <laughs> Uh, did you say Ziggy was parked outside in his chariot? Mm -hmm. He was when I came in. Oh, there he is. Yes, yeah, looking exactly as if he were back in Brooklyn. Uh, Ziggy! Oh, so she found you, huh? Uh, thanks to your bird dogging, which I must admit in this case has done much to overcome any natural prejudice against cab drivers that I might have. Uh, say, do you know where Harry Kelly lives? Sure. And let's go then. Huh? Hey, don't you ever clean out this hack? What's all this dust? Well, who knows? Maybe it was that redhead that hired me yesterday. So she had dandruff. Ziggy, you missed your calling. You're as funny as an undertaker. Well, now, Ziggy, I don't suppose you'd care to tell me why you warned me to get out of Headstone. You got me all wrong, Saint. I wasn't warning you. I was just talking about myself. And I don't suppose you'd care to tell me why somebody took pot shots at Miss Connolly here and told her to get out of town, too. Me? I don't know nothing. Like I was telling you, Saint, I mind my own business. Maybe you stay ignorant that way, but it's healthier, and I like it like that. Well, in that case, why did you send Miss Connolly in to see me? Well, like you can see, she's a pretty little pigeon. She needs to know some guy will help her. Now, it ain't no secret that the Saint goes around mixing in other people's business, so I tell her to see you. And who told you I was the Saint? <laughs> I got eyes in my head, ain't I? Like I said, I used to hack in Brooklyn, huh? I got around. Uh, what about this Mike McCart? Strictly smart money, Sam. Huh? A lot of guys have crossed his path once. If you get what I mean. What about, uh, Harry Kelly? Eh, local stuff. A nice schmo, but no more. <laughs> You're doing all right for a guy that doesn't know anything. <laughs> you got me wrong, pal. Ziggy, he looks people over, but he don't see nothing except one guy is tough, another guy is a schmo, and maybe... Another guy is too nosy. I really don't think we should try to involve Ziggy, Simon. He's been very nice as it is. Yeah, she's got something, pal. I ain't really equipped for it because uh, the way you're headed, uh, only a saint could feel at home. Well, here we are, Saint. Kelly lives on the first floor in the room. Oh, thanks. 
Uh, wait for us, Ziggy. We've got a couple of other calls to make after this. Don't worry, I'll wait. If you get in any trouble, just yell. Then I'll drive over and tell the sheriff I heard somebody yell for help. Oh, thanks, pal. Come on, Betty. Well, I hope our friend is in and that he talks. Yes. Strange. Harry telling you to come and see him if you had any trouble. If he had any connection with me, then why hasn't he said something to me? Well, he sounded to me like a cautious man. Maybe he did know something, but didn't want to say anything unless he felt sure something was going to be done. <laughs> well, we'll soon know. Yes, who is it? Simon Templer. Oh, the safe. Just a minute. Those shots were in that room. This is no time for conversation, darling. We're going in. Oh, but... Like this. Kelly. Uh -huh. Oh, Simon. Kelly. Uh -huh. Kelly, this is Simon Templer. Saint? Yes, Kelly, the saint. Who shot you? The window. The saint. But mine... Kelly. Well, Betty, he isn't going to tell us anything now. This killer did a very thorough job. Mm, window open. Must have shot from here. There's a shell on the fireplace. But what was he saying? It sounded like... like sin. <laughs> Come on, Betty, we're going to spread a little saintliness. And I think I know where to begin. Ziggy, didn't you hear anything? Well, I noticed some noise, but like I told I you... I know. You mind your own business. Uh, are we going to the sheriff's office? No, not yet. Ziggy, who's the assayer in this town? Old man Matthews. The office is closed now, but he lives right ahead there. That, that big white house. Okay, stop there. But Simon... I'd like to satisfy a little curiosity about that mine of yours. I'll be right back. You stay in here, Betty. Uh, what do you want? Mr. Matthews. Who else should be here? It's my house, ain't it? What do you want? Uh, my name is Simon Templer. I wanted to ask you if you know the Connolly Silver Mine. I know every mine within 200 miles of here, young fella. Hey, ain't that Betty Connolly sitting up there in that taxi? Yes. Then why can't she tell you about the mine? She owns it. Well, she has told me, but I just wanted to check about the possibility of a mistake. How much silver would you say there was in the Connolly mine? About enough to put in your eye and still leave room for your finger. Couldn't there be a hidden vein in it? Nope. There ain't been enough silver around here to make a dime for years and years. Could there be anything else of value in it? Mud and water, if you call that valuable. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Young fella, I've been here man and boy for 70 years. And I ain't got no time to stand around answering darn fool questions. Goodbye. Well, Goodbye. Betty, you may be right. Old man Matthews says the mine is worthless, too. So, Ziggy, take us to see Mike McCarthy. Are you sure you want to go there, sir? If I was you, I'd get on that plane. It's leaving pretty soon. No, Ziggy, I've decided not to leave Headstone just yet. Later, you can drive me over to Albuquerque, and I'll take the chief the rest of the way. Okay, chum, it's your funeral. <laughs> Please be careful. Don't you worry, Betty. The Halo Wearers Benevolent Association would be very upset if anything happened to me. I'll be right up. Yeah? I'm looking for Mike McCarthy. Well, you found him. Hmm, it's my Boy Scout training. It never fails. My name is Simon Templer. The Saint? I've been known by that name. So what? That's a very interesting question. I must try to think of an answer sometime. Meanwhile, I thought you might like to know that I heartily disapprove of your telling a certain Miss Betty Connolly that she ought to leave town. What's a girl to you? That's my business. I could make it mine. 
And if I do, your halo is going to slip down and start choking you. Hmm, I thought bullets were more in your line. Meaning what? Meaning the shots fired at Miss Connolly and a little gunning job only a few minutes ago? I didn't do any gunning. But I'm liable to if you don't beat it. You sound so sure of yourself, Michael. That's because I got more in my hand than an itching palm. Hmm, that's a very pretty gun, Mike. <laughs> But I'm very much afraid that nothing will satisfy my curiosity short of knowing why you want to get Miss Connolly out of town. I got answers for nosy guys. Six of them. I just stand right there. Stay away from that desk, Saint. Or Don't I'll... worry, Mike. I have no interest in the desk at all. But I do have an interest in Miss Connolly. And now, Michael, I'll bid you adieu. Oh, not much, I'm afraid. The conversation was just getting interesting when Mike had a sudden attack of dropsy. That's funny. I never heard of him being sick. Oh, that's because you mind your own business, Ziggy, like you tell me. Betty, where is that silver mine of yours? About two miles out of town. Is there any place in town where we can rent a car? Well, why, I have a car. Why? I feel a prospecting urge coming over me. Ziggy, take us to Miss Connolly's car, and then we can dispense with your valuable service. What's wrong with my cat? Nothing, Ziggy. It's just that I don't like people looking over my shoulder. Especially when I visit a lonely mine in the company of a beautiful girl. Well, here's the Betty mine. Although I don't know why you want to see it. Frankly, I don't know either. As long as I'm here, I might as well take the 40-cent tour. Certainly, sir. Right this way. This old cable car goes down into the mine. Mm. All we have to do is stand on the platform and pull the cable. It works with balanced weight. Clever these 49ers. How far down? <laughs> on the 40-cent tour, we give the exact distance. 354 feet 6 inches. Thank you. And uh, thank you for having electric lights in a mine that hasn't been worked for years. Oh, the mine has its own battery. See? Here's a bulb on the car. Shall we go down? What are we waiting for? Let's go. Maybe the light will go out. Just hold it like that. I've been waiting for you two. Well, Michael McCarthy, I was wondering if we were going to have your company. And this time, wise guy, don't try anything. Don't tell me, Michael, that you're going prospecting with us. I'm riding down with you, but I'm coming back alone. Start the car down, Saint, but don't try no tricks. You have a suspicious mind, Mike. Well, here we go. Call out your floors, please. Mezzanine ladies' underwear, galoshes, and accessories. You'll be singing a different tune pretty soon, Saint. You both had your chance to leave town your way. Now you're going to leave my way. Oh, Simon, I'm sorry. Oh, don't be, Betty. This is my first ride on an open cable car. And it'll be your last. I wouldn't be too sure. Unless that cable breaks before we get to the bottom. Hey, what are you talking about? Sucker! <laughs> A little crowded here for a one-two, so I, I guess a one and a half will have to do it. Oh, how, how terrible. There now, Betty. It's all right. Oh, Simon, it could have been you. He, he almost knocked you off the platform, too. Yeah, with the padded shoulders in my coat, I, I felt them hit the side. Oh, look at your shoulders. They're covered with dirt from the sides of the shaft. Yeah. Huh. It's red dirt. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, we can go back up, Betty. Mike doesn't need our help, and I don't need anybody to answer questions anymore. <laughs> I'll never understand you. Why did you look at the dirt on your coat and say you didn't need any more questions? Because that dirt was red sulfide, Betty. And it explains why Mike was so anxious to run you out of town. Well, I don't see how. Red sulfide is used in paint, but that doesn't make it valuable. Red sulfide is also cinnabar ore, from which we get mercury, and that is pretty valuable. Evidently, your mine is rich in cinnabar, so it's worth a lot of money, Betty. Oh, then that was what Kelly was trying to tell us when he said sin. Yes, he was trying to say cinnabar. 
How can I ever thank you, Simon? Well, I I have a couple of ideas on the subject. Oh, but now people would say I was chasing you for your money. So, I guess you can just see me off on the train. We'll stop in town and have Ziggy drive us to Albuquerque. Oh, but I'll drive you. Now, I insist on taking a cab. I don't want you coming back alone. I may want to change my mind about uh, fortune hunting. <laughs> Like I said, Saint, I'm glad to see you leaving. This town is just funny about strangers, but I think you ought to take Miss Connolly with you. Yeah, but she doesn't have to go now, Ziggy, and besides, she's rich. She's what? Yes, Ziggy, we found out that Dad's mine is valuable after all. You you mean you found silver in it? No, mercury. Oh, the stuff they put in the thermometer? That's the stuff, Ziggy. But it's used for a lot of other things, particularly in wartime, and it's worth a lot of money. Well, what do you know? So that's why Mike was trying to make you leave. That's it. Well, did you stop and tell the sheriff? We didn't have time, but I'll see him when we go back. Oh, that's pretty nice for you, ain't it, buddy? Oh, here we are. Just in time, too. The chief's in already. Right. Very nice timing, Ziggy. Thanks, Betty, for keeping my forced visit to Headstone from being dull. Oh, Simon, I... Well, why don't you stay in Headstone? I won't know how to run the mine or, or what to do with the money or, or anything. <laughs> You'll learn, Betty. You know what to do when you get back to town? Yes, but... Well, will the sheriff believe me? I mean, about Mike McCarthy killing Harry Kelly. I don't think he will, since Mike didn't kill Kelly. But... Kelly was shot with an automatic. He ejected a shell on the fireplace, remember? But Mike McCarthy carried a revolver. You saw it. Yes, but will the sheriff... Oh, the sheriff will believe when you show him that the gun that killed Kelly is in Ziggy's pocket. What? What are you talking about? You knew about the cinnabar ore in the mine. You carried some of it away to be tested in your cab. And there was red dust in it, which you tried to explain with a corny gag. You're crazy. Harry Kelly had an idea what was going on, so you slipped around to the back while we were at the front door and killed him. All right, wise guy, you're so smart. What about Mike? Mike was working for you. But, but Simon, Ziggy told me that you were in town. Sure, he couldn't be sure that I wasn't here to break up his little scheme. So the smartest thing to do was to get us together so he could watch both of us. <laughs> he thought I would use his cab as I did, and it would be easy. But he slipped up when he sent Mike out to the mine ahead of us. Ziggy was the only one who knew where we were going. Okay, pal, you ask for it. This time, sweetheart. <laughs> Like you said, pal, you should have followed your own advice about minding your own business. What? Well, he's all yours, Betty. The gun that killed Kelly is now on the seat beside him. All you have to do is turn the body and the gun over to the sheriff, and from there on in, he'll mind Ziggy's business for him. But, Simon... Don't worry, Betty. I'll stop back someday to make sure that Venus is in conjunction with Mercury. <laughs> You have just heard another adventure of the saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, how many times there have been men just like Ziggy, led into crime by insatiable greed, forgetting the simplest truth so aptly phrased by John Dryden. Murder may pass unpunished for a time, but tardy justice will overtake the crime. This is Vincent Price extending a personal invitation to all of you to join us again next week at this same time for another adventure of The Saint. Good night. Tonight's script of The Saint was written by Michael Cramoy. Our cast included Harry Bartell, Barney Phillips, Colleen Collins, Fred Howard, and Tony Barrett. The music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. The Saint is a James L. Safier Agency production and was transcribed and directed by Thomas A. McAvity. Don't forget that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer, Merrill Ross.